Hi, and welcome to Journey to the Word with J.P. Olson. We've had a delay on here. I hope I can get some of you on here with me today. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead since we're running behind, running late, trying to get, I had some technical difficulties. <laughs> Facebook had to walk me through the problem. And uh, so I want to welcome you here. Uh, we're live. We lost about um, 20 minutes, but I'm here. <coughs> Hi, Safraz. Once again, I apologize for the delay. Hi, Sharon. At least it wasn't on my end this time. <laughs> So I thank you, those who you are joining, coming back to join me. You're running behind, but I want to get right into the message because I had it narrowed down to 30 minutes today. So it's going to go a little bit over. But thank you again for joining me, those who are joining me. So we're going to get right into the message. Um, the message today, once again, thank you, those who are joining me and join me from near and far. May not have that many on because we're running behind, but I want to thank you. Thank you for the hearts and for the likes. Uh, I want to encourage you today uh, with the word of God. The message is, this is what causes us to become discouraged so quickly. Because as soon as God gives us a word, Satan goes to war. God speaks healing. And here comes Satan with another symptom. Uh, Satan gets busy. Uh, he, God speaks healing and Satan comes with another symptom and Satan gets busy whenever God has made a major landing in your life. In spite of what you face as a struggle, it's important that you learn how to put your praise in place so your problem doesn't knock you out of position. I'm going to say that again. In spite of what you face as a struggle, it's important that you learn how to put your praise in place so your problem doesn't knock you out of position. Here's what happens. Thank you for the hearts. Here's what happened. God's word has landed in your heart. And you're starting to gain some ground spiritually. So hell has been notified and your enemy is alarmed. Hi Adele, he comes immediately to try to take away the ground you just gained through God's word. And this is what causes us, as I mentioned, to become discouraged so quickly. Because as soon as God gives us a word, hi Lee, Satan comes and he goes to war. As I mentioned, God speaks healing. And here comes Satan with another symptom. God speaks wealth. And here comes Satan with an unexpected bill. God speaks promotion. And here comes Satan with a layoff. God speaks a new home. And here comes Satan with a leaky roof. God speaks opportunity, and here comes Satan with obstacles. Hi, Pat. God speaks calm, and here comes Satan with chaos. God speaks anniversary, and here comes God with divorce papers. Here comes Satan, I'm sorry, with divorce papers. And he doesn't drag his feet either. The Bible says he comes at once, by force, right away, immediately, no sooner than, quickly. And as soon as the word is sown, here comes Satan with his shovel. Thank you for those who hung, who came back in because we were running behind with technical problems. Thank God you're here. I want to just share that. I want to really share that again because I want you to grasp what I'm saying. The enemy never sleeps. He's never asleep. He, he delegates his minions around the clock. Thank you. Thank you. And here's what happens again. I'm going to share for those who are just getting back on joining me. God's word has landed in your heart. You're starting to gain some ground spiritually. So hell has been notified and your enemy is alarmed. He comes immediately because he don't want you to gain any ground spiritually. So he comes immediately to take away the ground you just gained through God's word. This is what causes us to become discouraged so quickly because as soon as God gives us a word, Satan goes to war. God speaks healing. And here comes Satan with another symptom. God speaks wealth. 
And here Satan's come with an unexpected bill. God speaks promotion. And here comes Satan with the layoff. God speaks a new home. And here comes Satan with the leaky roof. God speaks opportunity. And here comes Satan with obstacles. God speaks calm. And here comes Satan with chaos. God speaks anniversary. And here comes Satan with divorce papers. And he doesn't drag his feet either. He doesn't waste any time. The Bible says that he comes at once by force, right away, immediately, no sooner than, and quickly. And as soon as the word is sown, here comes Satan with his shovel. Mark 4.15 says, this, these in the first group are the ones along the road where the word is sown. But when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them. That's the Amplified Bible. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be alert and of sober mind because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We've heard that before. We've heard it before. That's 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 John 2, 14 and 15 says, I have written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your heart. And you have won your battle with the evil one. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. That's in the NLT. It's important to understand that Satan doesn't want you to gain any more ground. One of the enemy's favorite entry points into our lives is disappointment. But you can train yourself to recognize the three strategies of the enemy. So you can stand strong and persevere through unsettling relationships and uncertain outcomes. Let's face it. We all have some days when we feel like we're stuck in the basement, right? The view isn't very inspiring. And neither is the situation we're in. We're low in funds. We're low in joy. We're low in peace. We're low in confidence. And we're low in health. We're low in marriage and low in singlehood and Low in dealing with the battles of raising children and low in dealing with co-workers and even low while sitting in the pew next to our brothers and sisters in Christ. There are simply some moments in life when we're crashed in the basement instead of breaking through the ceiling. Can we be real about it here today? Know that everybody who says they're praying for you are not. Not everyone asking about your situation cares that you get out of it. Some just want to make sure you're still in it. That's why discernment and wisdom are necessities, not options. Well, the good news is there that there's no basement so deep or so gloomy that you must stay there because there's an elevator just waiting to take you back up, even though Satan is trying to hold you down in the basement. Trust God and trust the process. That's why discernment and wisdom are necessities, not just options. In spite of what you face as a struggle, it's important that you learn how to put your praise in place so your problem doesn't knock you out of position. The problem with us is that we let fear supersede our faith. Truth is, we must reach a place of trust, reliance, and dependence and faith in God whenever our, situ our circumstances doesn't alter our praise. I'm going to say that again. Truth is, we must reach a place of trust, reliance, dependence, and faith in God where our circumstances don't alter our praise. We need our situation our trials and our struggles to see that we walk by faith. Even when we, that walk takes us through the valleys of the shadow of death. Satan, thank you for the hearts and the light. Satan, the commander of hell's forces, is determined to stop you from ever becoming what Jesus died for you to be. And like any smart general, he knows he must stop you before you grow and gain any more ground. His strategy is revealed in Mark 4.15. 4, some people are like seeds along the path where the word is sown. And as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and take away the word that was sown in them. Listen to what Satan does. When you hear word from the Lord at once and by force, right away, Satan comes. Satan comes, Satan immediately comes. Satan comes at once. No sooner do they hear the word than Satan snatches Satan quickly comes. Listen, if you don't guard the word God has given you, Satan will come in immediately and fight to steal it. And in the end, you will be the one fleeing 
and surrendering everything, including those attached to you. In other words, by no means is Satan playing games. In fact, he's playing for keeps. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. That hasn't changed. John 10.10. 10. Nothing about that sounds like child's play, which is why it's so vital that you take the enemy seriously. He has a purpose just as much as you do. And if you let him, he will fulfill. He is leaving you to forfeit yours. Which may help explain why things have suddenly gotten so tough for you. You think you've done something wrong. Why things are going wrong for you. Maybe why you don't have this, that spiritual enthusiasm you did before. Your, log your logical reaction is, I've been trying really, I've been really trying to do what God wants. So what's wrong here? The answer is nothing is wrong. It's because something is right. You see, you have a promise, a word from God, and the enemy is worried and ready to attack because he can't let you have that ground. Not that you are doing something wrong. He can't let you gain anymore. So suddenly he's interested in you. He didn't bother you when you, were, when you weren't a threat to him. He didn't bother you when you stopped fasting, became lazy in reading and studying the word. He wasn't thinking about you when you started checking or started slacking in your prayer devotion time with God. He wasn't worried about you. When you stopped going to Sunday school and started making excuses for skipping Bible study, he wasn't worried about you. The enemy didn't think two cents about you. You didn't even appear on his radar. In fact, he may have said something like this, but the evil spirit retorted, I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus, and I know about Paul, but as for you, who are you? That's in Acts 19.15 in the Amplified Bible. You see, the enemy doesn't bother those who doesn't bother him. If you're not reading the word, in prayer and fasting and obeying the commandments and fellowshipping with your brothers and sisters in Christ and walking in the spirit, being directed and guided by the Holy Ghost. What does he want with you? After all, what can you do to attack his kingdom when you aren't armed with any of the weaponry of the kingdom yourself? You see what I'm saying? He's not bothered. He's not bothered. If you're not reading God's word, I'm trying to tell it like it is, Day Day. If you're not reading God's word and you're not fasting and in prayer and you're not obeying the commandments and you're not fellowshipping with your brothers and sisters in Christ and you're not walking in the spirit, you're not being directed and guided by the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, what does he want with you? After all, what can you do to attack this kingdom? Because you you're not suited up. You're not wearing the armor when you, aren't, when you aren't armed with any of the weaponry of the kingdom yourself. You're not a threat to him. However, for those who have made the decision to get rid of their bad habits and attitudes and addictions and those who decided to reignite the fire in their gifts and prayer and devotion time, those spending more time with God, the saints and in the sanctuary, those hearing from God and following the directors of the Holy Ghost, the enemy is screaming, ready, aim, fire. And by no means should that terrify you. In fact, it ought to excite you that you're finally on the enemy's hit list. It's not because of what you're doing wrong. It's because you finally got it right. So now he's got to get himself in position to make it hard for you. He's got to stop your forward progress fast or there's no telling how much ground he's going to lose. He must stop you before you start interceding for folks. Uh, laying hands on people. Uh, he must stop you before you start uh, speaking in tongues and, and binding the words of the flesh or the works of the flesh. He's got to stop you before you stop pleading the blood of Jesus over your family. He's got to stop you before you start, you start anointing your children. He's got to stop you before you start speaking those things that be not as they were. I feel something today. He's got to stop you before your hope is renewed and your faith is revived. He's got to stop you before you start believing that God meant just what he said concerning you. I want y'all to share this message today, those who are on here with me. He's got to stop you before you start dreaming again. He's got to stop you before you stop living in the past and start seeing yourself in a great future. He's got to stop you from walking with God before you gain more ground. Are you listening to me today, those who are with me? Satan gets busy 
whenever God has a major landing in your life. Maybe you recently made a new surrender of your life to Jesus, or you said yes to his call on your life. You stepped up to leadership. Could it be that you begun a new work for the Lord? made a new commitment to the marriage partner or the parent you should be to give more to the Lord's work, uh, to live by new priorities. Uh, guess what? Alarm bells are going off in Satan's place. But don't get discouraged. Don't go back to the old ways. This is just your old enemy trying to stop this progress while it's new and fragile. If you keep going this way, your enemy is going to lose big time. And he knows it. He may be vicious, but he's not victorious. Come on, say that with me. He may be vicious, but he's not victorious. So step up and launch a biblical counterattack. In the words of James 4 and 7, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Psalm 91. We should all know it. It says, you who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. Say this, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. He said, fear nothing, not wild wolves in the night, not flying arrows in the day. And not diseases that prowls through the darkness, not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left, no harm would even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpses. Yes, because God's your refuge. The high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't go get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. I love that, that part there. We have angels that he's assigned to us to guard us wherever we go. In the, if you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick lions and serpents from the path. You'll kick them and say, get out of my way. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. That's what he said. That's his promise. I'll give you the best of care if you'll only get to know and trust me. Call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you, then throw you a party, he said. I'll give you a long life, give you a long drink of salvation. That's in the Messenger Bible. That's the security you have when you come near to God and he comes near to you. Not only is he your refuge keeping you safe, but he's also ordered, not asked, he didn't ask his angels, he ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. Remember this the next time God gives you a word. Protected by remaining in the presence of God. Knowing that his angels are with you, guarding you, keeping you safe wherever you go. That's how you protect your beachhead, your promise, your word from God. Don't just let the devil take your property. Fight for it, guard it, and stay as close to God as you can. Something I pray on a regular basis is that God will give me a keen awareness of the enemy's plots and plans and schemes against me. I want to be able to recognize his traps and avoid them. As I uh, just compared passages, I, had a, I think I had a serious epiphany about how Satan goes after us. And these verses outline Satan's three-pronged attack on our heart. And it's the same plan we see him using while tempting Jesus in the desert in Matthews 4, 1, 11. A fact that tells me while the enemy may be powerful, he's also predictable. Let's take a closer look at Satan's plan as revealed in Eve's story and Jesus' story. You see, he make them crave some sort of physical gratification to the point they become preoccupied with it. Be it sex, drugs, alcohol, or food. You see, Satan tempted Eve, Eve with fruit, which was good for food. That's in Genesis 3 and 6. Satan tempted Jesus with bread while he was on a fast in Matthews 4, 3 and 4. Satan tempts us with whatever physical sense we are too preoccupied by. Be it taste, smell, sound, touch, or sight. God says that our senses are good. 
He gave them to us to enjoy within his boundaries, but venture outside God's intention for them. And they become an attempt to get our needs met outside the will of God. I'm going to say that again. God says that our senses are good. Taste, smell, sound, touch, or sight. He gave them to us to enjoy within his boundaries. Boundaries. But when you venture outside God's intention for them, and they become an attempt to get our needs and met outside the will of God. That's what happens. When we venture outside God's intentions for them, they become an attempt to get our needs met outside the will of God. And many people are getting their needs met outside the will of God by whatever means necessary. Satan tempted Eve by drawing her attention to what was pleasing to the eye. Genesis 3 and 6. Satan showed Jesus the kingdom of the world and told him that he could have it all. That's in Matthew 4 and 8. Satan flashes the newer, bigger, and seemingly better things of this world in front of us, trying to lure us into thinking we must have it. He tempts us to think this will make me fulfill. This will make me happy. And then it wears out. It breaks down. It gets old and reveals just how temporary every material thing is. This world is temporal. But spending time with Jesus is eternal. Make thing, may he make them think boastful about what they have, have or do. Keep them distracted and obsessed with their status and, and significance. He choked the life out of them using the tentacles of their own pride. Satan tempted Eve by promising an increased awareness, which will make her become more like God. You got people want to be like that today. Genesis 3, 4, and 5. Satan tempted Jesus by telling him to throw himself off the highest point of the temple and command the angels to save him. Matthew 4 and 5. This will be very impressive and raise Jesus' status and significance in the eyes of the world. Likewise, Satan tempts us to try and elevate ourselves over others. We wrongly think we must become something the world calls worthy. This creates a need within our flesh to have people notice us. Command us, revere us, and stroke our pride. We then dare to boast about all we are. This is where we must stop and remind ourselves that we don't have to be held hostage by Satan. We are unto him and his schemes. And the enemy's power is nothing compared to the freeing promises of God. There was a huge difference between Eve's response to Satan and Jesus' response to Satan. Eve dialogued with Satan, and she allowed him to weave his tangled web of justifications. Jesus, on the other hand, quoted Deuteronomy, with every temptation as he answered, it is written. And he immediately shut Satan down with the truth of God. This is what I'm telling you today. Take your authority. Quote the word of God. Throw the word at him. He can't handle it because he's going to tremble. He and his little de uh, uh, minions and demons. Eve got into, you can't get into a dialogue with the devil. So the Bible says resist the devil. Once you get into a dialogue with him, that's it. You started talking back to him and people, th and he sent his minions, little demons, and you started believing stuff, and, and now you got into a dialogue. But Jesus shut him down with the word of God. And we have access to that same word. Don't get all excited about the word from God and forget to guard it. Remember that enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And that includes you and the word of promise given to you. Don't let him get it. He's ready and alert. Now make sure you are too. Make sure you suit it up. 1 Peter 5 and 8 said, keep a cool head. So stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and will like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones a plunge into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. We know how the story ends. It may look like from a distance Satan is winning. We know how the story ends. So you keep a firm grip on your faith because this suffering won't last forever. God, God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are. 
He'll, he'll put us, he'll help us. He'll get us together. We have to stay alert because the devil is paused to pounce. The danger for us as believers is becoming lazy. Is that the devil never is lazy. He's operating 24-7. He's ready. He's poised and pounce. He is in position to attack. Are you? Are we? Hi, Marilyn. Those of you just joining me, if you didn't catch the whole message, you got to come back and catch it because it's definitely a word. It's going to help somebody today. Charles Spurgeon said, the greatest sign of God's will and God's power is the devil's growl. If you're hearing the growl, you're probably on the right track. You're on your way to some of the greatest victories in your life. The devil may be vicious. He's not victorious. Protect your word. Protect your promise. He's only getting worse because you're getting better. It will be a fight to the finish, but one you will finish and win. Keep your armor on and fight the good fight of faith. You'll gain more ground if you keep the devil under your feet. 1 Timothy 6 and 12 said, fight the good fight of the, of the faith in the conflict with evil. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many witnesses. Therefore, soldiers in the Lord's army, put your warfare clothes on. Go to battle and guard the word God gives you. Ephesians uh, 6, 8, 18. And, and that about wraps it up because God is strong and he wants you strong. So you take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to you so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. There, there, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. It's a life or death fight to finish against the devil and all his demons. Be prepared because you're up against far more than you can handle on your own. That's why you have intercessors and warriors and watchmen. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them to your life. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and pray long. For your brothers and sisters, keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind to drop out. Thank you for the hearts and the light. The good news is that there is no basement so deep or so gloomy that you must stay there. Because there's an elevator just waiting to take you up. Trust God and trust the process. Trust God and trust the process. You see, I said my, my message today, I had planned for 30 minutes and it was on point. But technical problems prevented us and we came in 20 minutes late. But you know what? We came in. So, dear Lord, we thank you for making us aware of the enemy's plans against us. We declare today that while the enemy may be vicious, he will not be victorious in our life. Not with you helping us, Lord, to walk in truth and life and light. You see, he's not going to gain any more ground. And you have to say that he's been messing with you, your family, your job, your finances, your health, your children and everything. He's been messing with you. And you, you, you tell him today, you're not gaining any more ground. You may be vicious, but you will not be victorious in my life. It ends today. Whatever you try, Satan, I'm going to tell you it is written. And I'm, going to, I'm not even getting into a dialogue with you. You want to throw us off with illnesses, with deaths in the family, with, with finances, with all kinds of problems, marriage and everything else, children. You're not going to do it today, devil. It's over for you. Like my kids say, it's O.V. It's over for you because he, he, he wants to get in position to make it hard for you. you. You making ground and you asking yourself, and I want those of you that ask yourself, stop, and stop thinking you've done something wrong. Stop saying, what have I done wrong that I'm having all these problems? It's what you're doing right. Because if, now, if you're praying and you're fasting and you're doing those things, you, it's what you're doing right. And he's, he's upset because he wants to stop that action. He wants to stop you before you gain any more ground. He gets busy when he know God has made a major landing in your life. And I, I said earlier, maybe you recently made a new surrender in your life to Christ or you said yes to his call and you got stepped up to leadership role or maybe promotion. Could it be you began a new work for the Lord and you made a commitment to the marriage partner or you said, let me be the parent I should be in and all these things. Don't get discouraged. This is just the old enemy trying to stop your progress while it's new and fragile. And you just keep going it, going this way because your enemy, he's going to lose this big time and he knows it. He's going to lose this big time 
And we stay, we stay with James 4 and 7. We submit ourselves to God. We resist the devil. We don't get a, in a dialogue with him. We don't start asking questions about what I've done wrong. And he will flee from us because God said, come near to me and I will come near to you. That's my message for today. If you missed the first part of the message because we came in late, once again, because of technical problems, we want you, I want you to hear this message because I shared, shared, or shared earlier with those who are on here. Why the devil wants to keep, you know, he wants to bother you. And as long as you're not doing the things that you should be doing, I mentioned as long as you're not fasting and praying and staying in the word and going to Bible study and all the things, he ain't got a problem. <laughs> He, he ain't going to bother you because you, you, you can't do nothing for him. You already, he already got the world. But, but when you're praying and fasting and standing in the gap for others and interceding and doing those things, you're a problem for him. And he's going to try to stop it any way he can. So today I want you to be encouraged. My message is I try to on Wednesday is always about encouragement to help you get through because many of us are going through some things. And I know this. And you just don't know what to do. And which way to turn? Because the enemy wants to discourage you. He wants to tell you, you know, your health is not going to get any better. Uh, th this person in the family is not going to get any better. Uh, uh, he don't want you speaking life. He's going to tell you, you know, you're going to be, you're going to die a pauper. You're going to be broke all your life. And you're not going to do it. And God doesn't care about you. He, he's going to tell you a whole lot of mess. He's going to try to discourage you and distract you. And you're going to start thinking something I've done wrong. Something we've done wrong. And he's saying, no, it's what you're doing right. Because the enemy don't like it. You keep praying. You keep fasting. You keep standing. Even when you're going through, pray for somebody else. Even when you got health challenges, pray for somebody else. Even when you don't have but $20 in the bank to your holy name, give somebody 10 if they need some help. You keep doing what you need to do. And God will do the rest. That's my message for today. And once again, I apologize for the delay. But if you missed the whole message, I want you to come back in and I want you to hear it because it wasn't a long message today. We would have been through it at, th at 1.30, but we went over So because of what happened. So I want you to share this word. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for those who come in. Thank you, Merlin, for coming on, joining us. I thank you, Adele and Lee. I think Safraz came on and Pat came on and Merlin came on and and I'm not sure if any others were able to uh, to get back on. Uh, Sharon was on, uh, so I want to thank those who are on uh, for coming for, for for coming back to see if we were on. And uh, I thank you. I, I thank you, Day Day. I pray that the message was on time. Uh, I pray that words from here can help someone. That you all can take it with you. Thank you. That it was a great message. Please share it. And uh, I will let the others know that the message is there. We, I will let them know I send it out. We had a delay, but the message is there. They can go back and hear the message for today. So thank you. God loves you. I love you too. Thank you, Geraldine, for coming in and for getting everything. You were right on, on time with me, as the delay, and you came right in. Thank you for listening that we were having technical problems, and thank you for, for being able to come in and get all the information up. I appreciate you, and I just thank all of you. I thank all of you are going to be back here on Saturday. And, and thank you, Lee, and those who are from the different countries that have joined me. I see New Zealand and Australia jumped in. So I thank you uh, for joining me. And I'm going to be on uh, again on Saturday morning. Those of you who can join me, please do. Uh, please invite others to come. Uh, let's just not keep it to ourselves. Uh, the ministry is growing in other areas. And so we want you to invite others to come to get the word of God. And I'm just going to close out. It's, it's, it's almost two. And just going to close out on a song that we can end on and to let us know that we, we need the Lord. We need him at all times. There's never a time that we don't need him. And I thank God. I, I thank him. We always need him. Thank you again for joining me. And I pray that you can join me on a Saturday morning. By, by, bowing here. Hi. Okay. Yes. We're praying and praying for Kim and her family and praying for Janet and Jeremy and for them. We pray that God is going to bring them through this. Yes. And others who reached out with prayer. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. I need you. 
My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Yes. When sin runs deep, your grace is more. Your grace is found. We want to thank you. Geraldine has posted here where you can place your prayer request. If we have anyone here for the first time, we got the prayer of salvation. I think it's posted. We want you to, to develop a relationship with Christ. Yes. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. you. You're my one defense to teach my song to rise to you. When temptations comes my way. When I cannot stand, Lord. I'll fall on you, Lord. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Yes. We want you to stay connected with us. Go to go visit our YouTube and, and uh, sign up and subscribe on YouTube. If you enjoy my music, you can download it from Amazon or iTunes. If you just want a track, if you want the full CD, you can order from my website. We have my website listed, and you can sign up for our inspirational readings every Monday. It goes out every Monday. And if you have a prayer request, just submit that request to our form on our website. Yes. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. We thank you, bless you, God loves you, and I love you too. If Jesus does not delay his coming, I will see you on Saturday morning. Have a blessed day. Goodbye.